Hi everyone, welcome to my tutorial on the two-handed knot tie. So this knot is generally harder to grasp for students when they're first learning surgical knot tying. Maybe it's the way that both hands are involved and it's kind of confusing to remember when to do what. I know in my case, it took me a lot of time to remember how to do it, but once I learned with the method shown in this video, I never forgot after that. So I believe this is the best way to learn the two-handed knot tie. So let's see how it's done. So again, the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is simulate passing the suture through the wound so that in your mind, you know which is the free end and which is the needle end. Both hands are gonna to have to be free to perform this knot. So your right hand is gonna hold the free end and your left hand is gonna grasp the rest of the string with the three fingers with the index and the thumb available to do the action. This is the basic positioning and as you notice the index and the thumb are making this nice semicircle. The rest of the fingers are grasping tightly and shouldn't slip. So the axis you want is to have the free end in a forwards and backwards axis and the rest of the string in your left hand is going to be always pointing towards the left. This will help you determine if the free end is an index side or the thumb side. So starting off with the index side, you hook onto the free end and it's always going to be the free end first and then the other end of the string. So you're just hooking it on towards that hand and then going under the other string. After that, you're going to be grabbing the free end between your thumb and your index and passing it under. Passing it right under. We'll go into more detail in a little bit. This is just a general overview of the move. I'm pointing out that you don't want to just flip uh, the free end on the other side and make a 180. Rather, Whichever way the string is pointing initially when you're holding it, you want to end up in the same direction. This is probably one of the biggest tips that helped me be consistent. Here's a closer look at what exactly I mean. So you're always starting off with the free end first, hooking it on and then hooking the other one, putting it over your index and grabbing the free end with your thumb. You don't want to grab the junction of the two strings, but really just the free end. And with a bit of tension, you can just poke it through. Again, this is not what you want. And this is what's commonly taught is that you just flip it and do a 180. But you rather want to make a kind of a semicircle so that it goes under and back at the same direction it's facing. So the string is facing me and now I'm putting it under and making it face me again as it's passing under the string. This just helps to know which way to pull consistently and not have to think an extra step which direction is the right direction to pull. The other is the same kind of idea. Free end first with your thumb. You're grabbing that free end towards your left hand, going under the other string, putting the free end on the thumb, clipping it between the index and the thumb, making sure to only grab that free end and not uh, the crossings of the string and again it's facing away so you want to end up making it face away again and not towards don't just flip it make a nice semicircle so that it ends up over there and you know that you have to pull in that direction and that's it it's definitely a little slower than the one-handed knot and it's not the preferred knot by most surgeons and most students but it is one that you have to know in case you get pimped on it in the operating room. By learning it this way, it becomes a almost one-handed knot because the left hand is doing most of the action and the right hand is only assisting and it's less confusing. Here it is with a suture. As you can see, the hands are gonna be always alternating the way they're pulling as usual to make square knots. And whichever way the free end is pointing at first, I wanna keep it pointing in that direction when it goes under the string. That way, I'm always just following whichever way I'm pulling and then 
the right hand doesn't have to uh, think about uh, which way is the right way for square knots. And there you have it. Keep practicing until it's perfect. Thanks for watching.